Welcome again to our talks on machine translation. Last time you have seen sentences difficult to translate by machine and sometimes also difficult to understand for humans. This time we will look at sentences that are seemingly very easy and moreover you don't get the slightest suspicion when looking just at the empty output. In these cases, empty simply deceives. We start with the more striking and unexpected errors and we'll proceed to those that are more systematic and deadly as well. Let's say you receive this short text message, Paul robbed in London, meet us in London. That seems like an invitation for a looting trip, but the original sentence was very different. Pavla okradli v Londýně, sejdeme se v Plzni. So actually, you are expected to meet in Pilsen, and Paul was not robbing in London, but he was robbed there. While it's very difficult to explain the London Pilsen swap, some lexical errors can be explained from the fact that uh, computers are trained from web pages. So if we have a parallel web page, a web page that is both in Czech and English, computers can erroneously learn that the word Czech, Česka, gets translated as the word English, because they both appear on the same position on the web page. Similar errors can be learned from books, for example, where names like Novak, the most frequent Czech name, is translated as Smith, John Smith. So here we have the Czech sentence Jan Novák potkal Karla Poláka and all the names happen to get translated into John Smith met Charles Paul. Such bad things can happen also to numbers uh, as uh, errors in our MD systems show. Here we have the input call 12651 for help and the translation is volání o pomoc 12,65. Here are some snippets from an automatically extracted translation dictionary. As you see, some numbers get translated as Roman numbers or lexical values or simple words. Some numbers get simply distorted. All these items from the translation dictionary are very infrequent, but in rare cases they can actually make it to the final output of an empty system, totally distorting the meaning of the sentence. Systematic errors arise from situations not modeled adequately by the system. For example, semantic roles, who does what to whom, are expressed as cases, case markings in Czech. So here we have a few sentences about a dog, cat and a mouse. The first one says, the dog gives the cat a mouse. The second one, because the case markings are different, says to the dog, the mouse gives the cat. And the last one says, to the dog, the cat gives a mouse. All these variations of the sentence are translated as the identical English string, the dog gives the cat a mouse. And that's because the empty system simply ignored the case markings on the check input. Another systematic error is caused by negation. Negation is expressed differently in various languages and Czech is interesting in that it expresses negation twice, it uses double negation. So the English sentence, I have no cat, is correctly translated into Czech as nemám žádnou kočku. As we will learn in the coming talks, this sentences are used to create a translation dictionary by aligning the words to each other and then extracting translation pairs. So from this sentence pair, the system learned that the word cat is translated as kočku, the word no is translated as žádno, and the words I have are translated as nemám. The problem is caused by the fact that Nemam includes the negation as well. This phrase pair thus leads to systematic loss of negation or introduction of negation, depending on the direction in which it is used. Here we have the error illustrated. As you see, many sentences where I'm saying, I don't have a cat, I don't have a dog, I don't have a giraffe, the system systematically drops the negation. If the negation is part of a longer phrase, which is not translated by the word to have in English, the negation is preserved. I'm not hungry, I'm not thirsty, I have no money and I do not work.
Let's try translating the same sentence with a system that somehow observes the grammatical structure of the input sentence. Nemám kočku. So even this system got it wrong until the sentence is completed. With a full stop at the end, the syntactic analysis of the sentence can be completed and the system notices that there is the negation. Internally, the system is obviously statistical because some of the phrases were translated correctly and the giraffe was still wrong. We can't really laugh at those outputs. Our system is actually even worse. I have a cat, no dog, giraffe, not hungry, not thirsty, no money, I work. The last frequent issue I want to talk about is caused by multi-word expressions when, where the individual parts of the phrase can appear far from each other. One such example are Czech reflexive verbs. These verbs are or are not complemented by the reflexive particle, this se. And that can often radically change their meaning. As an example, let's take the Czech sentence. Here, the machine translator makes errors from top to bottom. The Czech translation of making errors is plast se, and the reflexive particle is far away from the main verb plede. As you see, the output is therefore distorted. Here, machine translator knits from top to bottom. From the English, we would thus think that the translator, instead of making errors, makes sweaters. Despite the scary translations you have seen today, you should remain optimistic about MT. For any longer text, I'm certain that you will get the right idea about its content. It's only the level of individual words and propositions where you really need to be cautious and take the output with a big grain of salt or have it post-edited by humans. Next time, we will have a look at the issue of pre-processing.